High Adventure. Tonight we tell the story, Madness in the Air, by Alan Pamplin. Ladies, now you can dress in high fashion at unbelievably low cost. Thousands of South African women acclaim Janome sewing machines, which not only simplify dressmaking, but give your work a real professional touch. Janome is a quality-built sewing machine which tacks, hems, smocks, darns, and does all kinds of fancy or plain stitching perfectly. What's more, Janome comes in a full range of models, and every machine carries a lifetime guarantee. You can do so much more with a Janome. Every General R280 radial has 364 little safety studs between its treads. The studs are there to brace and stabilize the treads and help stop them fidget under stress. And the fact that we've reduced the fidget in our treads explains why the General R280 breaks so well, corners so well, and has the longest possible life. General R280 radials. The long-living tires. madness in the air of Egypt when the Hamsim blows. Hamsim. It is the Arabic word that means 50. Some say that the wind is called 50 because it blows for 50 days. It does not. It blows as long as I need it to blow. And that may be only a minute. Or uh, some say the wind, my servant, is called 50 because it is a gale of 50 miles an hour. That is not true either. It may blow harder. It may blow a little less hard than 50 miles an hour. That is of no importance. It will blow hard enough. My servant, the wind, the great and deadly Hamsim. I believe it is right to call that mighty power the Hamsim, the 50. For my great wealth has come from the Hamsim. And when I have the wealth of 50 dead men, I will release my servant from its slavery to me. And no longer will the voice of the Hamsim call rich men to judgment in this way. It was good of you to give me this appointment. Not at all, Mr. Travers. You have come half across the world to consult me. I will be happy to assist you in any way. I believe you are in some difficulty. Uh, yeah, that's right. It certainly is some difficulty, I must say. I know you Arabs like to talk all around the subject before you... Oh, come... let me come to the point. You are in difficulties to two million dollars. Is that not so? Hey, you do come to the point, don't you? Well, the fact is that... The sum is a trifling one, I believe. You can lend me that much? Just out of hand? Mr. Travers, you were recommended to me by the chairman of an American company manufacturing the components of the electrical appliances you distribute. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Old Dave Grassley. You certainly put his firm back on its feet. I trust you are not yourself the head of your company. This is important. If you are, I cannot easily advise you. Uh, no, sir. Mr. Crosley made that same point. Uh, the chairman of our board is... I am not concerned with his name. I am only concerned that uh, he should come to visit me here at Alexandria at the date which I shall give you. Hey, now, hold on here. Dave never said I had to order my boss about. I'm not at all sure the old man would Mr. take... Mr. Travers, when you call on a business consultant, you do not reject his recommendations, assuming you are in desperate difficulties. I do not merely ask whether you can get your chairman to call on you. I only tell you that this is what you must do. Is that understood? Now, see here. I'm not accustomed to being spoken to in that way. I mean, after all... Neither are you accustomed to being two million dollars in trouble or getting rescued from such trouble. You will do as I say, or I will do nothing. Now, even if I said that, as 
good to see you again. Uh, may I present Mr. Harley, our chairman? How do you do, Mr. Bain? Mr. Travers, good to see you again. Mr. Harley, I am delighted to uh, make your acquaintance. It was good of you to, uh, to comply with my request so promptly. Oh, Travers here was most insistent. Claim was now or never. Matter of life and death from what he said. Harley, you know the trouble the company's in as well as anyone does. Yeah, quite so, gentlemen. And you have brought the necessary documents? Travers has them. But before we complete them, do you mind if I ask a few questions? Of course, questions? you wish some ideas of how your company can be rescued. That's right. And this is only natural. Well, Mr. Harley, I take it that you have made out a power of attorney to Mr. Travers? Yes, I have. It's here in my pocket. As soon as I know what it's for, I'll decide whether to hand it over. Ah, quite right. Secondly, uh, please disclose to me the details of your insurance policy. Travers, you have the policies there. Oh, yes, sir. There's a 70,000 policy on... If the... I may interrupt, the, just the total. Thank you. Well, if Mr. Harley dies accidentally this year... Yes, that is the point of the discussion. Uh, then just over $2 million goes to the company in respect of policies on his life. Policies covering the firm against loss of his services... Now, there's policy... no need to go into the depressing details, Sam. Mr. Bay is no doubt familiar with the standard policies for a company chairman. What I want to know is... How is all this information relevant? All in good time, Mr. Harley. At this point, there is the matter of my fee as a consultant. Travers? Uh, yeah. A hundred thousand gold sovereigns deposited with the Bank of Indochina in Paris. Uh, to your account, that was paid. And evocable by me within one calendar month from today. That was the agreement, I believe. Entirely satisfactory. And now you will wish to know exactly how I propose to save your company from ruin, Mr. Harley. Uh, Mr. Travers. I didn't come all this way to play games. That's for sure. Uh, quite so, quite so. Well, the facts are quite simple, sir. You, Mr. Harley, will remain in this apartment until the Khamsin begins. You have heard of the uh, Khamsin. It is the terrible legendary wind of the East. Some say that it brings death. I find the saying is true. Should you wish to refuse to cooperate with this uh, wind of death, Mr. Harley, you will find that Mr. Travers will force you to do so. He and I and the Hamsin can indeed save your company from destruction, but only at the price of your own life. <laughs> Here, Miss Hemingway, I, I believe there's been some mistake here. No mistake, Mr. Travers. I realize that when you called the FBI, you didn't expect a woman operative to be sent here. But I don't happen to be with the FBI. We suggest that this was an overseas matter. The Bureau doesn't operate outside the continental U.S. Oh, I see. Then you're with the CIA, in fact. Let's say the Bureau will confirm my credentials if you check with them. Now, look, I'm not at all sure I want to go on with this in that case. Mr. Travers, you have no alternative. It's quite clear that some crime has been committed and that you can give us a lead. If you withdraw your cooperation now, I am authorized to hold you as a material witness. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I'll go along with it. Because you fear for your life? I wouldn't go so far as to say that I... I fear for my life. Oh, let's not beat about the bush, Mr. Travers. Perhaps I can make things easier by outlining some of the information we already have. I'm aware of what I reported. Yes, but you don't know was the only one part of a very strange jigsaw. For example, your friend Mr. Crossley and an aircraft company head in California, two oil company chairmen in Oklahoma, a television network chief. What have they got to do with my inquiry? Everything, Mr. Travers. No fewer than six new chairmen of important American companies have made a similar inquiry over the past four years. I had no idea. That's right. They all wanted to know what you asked. They wanted to know if they could be prevented from entering Egypt. Now, what an extraordinary request to make. 
Usually, the FBI's asked to clear people so they can go from one country to another. Six of them, you say? Miss Sutton, counting you. And what's the ruling? Frankly, the authorities are baffled and baffled myself. Why would anyone want to make sure he never entered Egypt? There seems no likelihood that any of these men would ever want to go to the country. They have no business interest there. It's not even a convenient place for a holiday. Mr. Travers, I'm counting on you to tell me why these important businessmen might go to Egypt. And why on earth they should get in touch with the FBI and ask to be prevented from going. You might want to leave it now, Miss Hemingway. But there was a time when these beaches of Alexandria were crowded with visitors like yourself from all over the world. That is why I was so pleased when you arrived here. If your travel agency and my beachfront hotels can get together... Oh, I'm pretty sure we can work something out. I do profoundly hope so. My father and his father before him, they were rich men, Miss Hemingway. The family hotels absolutely dominated the Alexandria holiday season. Millionaires from all over the cold gray countries used to flock here in their hundreds every year. I know. Some of the records of my tourist agency go back a century. I came across them accidentally, as I told you. And I was knocked out to realize what a fortune we could make if only... If only this beautiful, historic city, which I love dearly, were once again popular seaside resort that it used to be. Abbasay, what do you call this part of the beach? It is called El Maut. Not a good name to publicize for tourism. Well, that's what I had in mind. Colorful local names always go down very ah, well. I'm afraid. Well, you see, there is something of a cliff here. It seems that it is easy to lose one's footing and fall on the rocks below. El Maut, and that is Arabic for death, Miss Hemingway. The place of death, you see. Oh, so that's one local name I should forget about. Eh. Uh, Say, isn't it around here that that American businessman was found dead just a few months ago? Uh, you are right to say something should be forgotten. Uh, let us move on. Oh, what was his name? Uh, Harbin? Uh, no, Carl, Carl, no, Har Harley. That it, that's it. Irvin Harley. Quite a story back in the States. It seems his company was going through a terrible financial crisis. As I recall, the financial crisis was purely temporary matter and soon rectified with great success. Oh, sure. There's a guy called Travers running the setup now, and they're going from strength to strength. Nobody believes the rumor that old Harley committed suicide. Suicide? Oh, what an absurd idea. Well, why would an American businessman come all the way to Egypt to commit suicide? Here, it is absurd, sure enough. And even if he did do that for some reason, he wouldn't choose your cliff here of all places. I mean, how high is it? Twelve feet or fifteen feet at the most. Anybody who threw themselves over this cliff would have trouble doing more than to break a leg, fracture an ankle. It just doesn't make sense to call this place El Mawet, does it? Oh, come, Miss Hemingway. I would like to show you the view from my penthouse. The Ham Sin. The wind I told you of is about to blow. You should witness it. It is something remarkable. How would you like to feel years younger? If you're middle-aged and troubled by forgetfulness, restless sleep, lack of vigor and odd aches and pains, try Salusa 45. Salusa 45's remarkable formula actually helps you feel and look years younger. Salusa 45 helps give you new physical and mental energy. It can even help combat the symptoms of aging too quickly. Enjoy life. Feel years younger. Try Salusa 45. Darling. Yes? I've lost my gold watch. Is that all? Well, no. We need burgles. Everything's gone. Really? And the burglar's stolen our car. Anything else? I'll call Standard Bank. Standard Bank? Well, the Standard Bank handles all our insurance, darling. We get instant cover and pay premiums monthly. Whatever happens, we're covered. Uh, what's that noise? Darling, I think the house is on fire. 
Miss Hemingway did not accept my invitation to view the majesty and terror of the harm scene from my penthouse. <laughs> Perhaps this was a pity. It is my practice, when necessary, to leave open a door facing the service door. When the glorious hum scene blows, this does not cause a disturbance in the penthouse, for the wind travels past one open door. Yet, if the service door is also open, <laughs> the wind makes its irresistible way through the penthouse, and should anyone be standing by the open service door, he will be infallibly snatched away by my servant, the mighty wind, and dashed to destruction upon the part of the beach below that is called El Mout, the place of death. When the bodies of so many other American executives were found, there was some mystery about how they got to Egypt. But then, why should they not? It is a wonderful land for a holiday, away from the madding crowds. But there was no mystery about how they died. A fall down a cliff of uh, 12 or 15 feet can cause the death of the men. And there seemed less and less reason to doubt it, as more and more died there. And I grew richer and richer. It was not long before I welcomed Say that unless you can help us, our, our whole conglomerate is going to be in trouble. Uh, Mr. Penn, there are times when I can help. Uh, yes, I know. I uh, got your name. No and... unnecessary disclosures, please. All discretion. Yeah. Well, then, I, I heard about you from a guy in the road-making business. It seems his firm had nearly a billion dollars laid out in equipment and projects. And the stock market began to slide a little due to the ending of the Vietnam War. May I recall the events? I uh, trust the road-building people are back on their feet again. Uh, they are, sir, thanks to you. Now, why do you say it is thanks to you? Well, when I spotted this trouble threatening my own company, I had a word with the chairman of the road-builders. He was pretty cagey. He wouldn't come straight out with it. But he did say you were the man to see. And Mr. Penn, when you say your own company... I trust you do not mean that you are the chairman. If you are, I cannot help you. Uh, my friend, uh, my, my friend told me that. Uh, that's why I came to see you myself instead of bunting the idea upstairs to our chairman, Mr. Maggio. But I must say I can't figure why that's important. You can't? It's got me beat. Oh, it is the whole key to my uh, uh, operation here. Well, that's the position with my company. I'm president. I take it you have come to consult me because you uh, foresee some financial difficulties in the near future. That's dead right, sir. Uh, nothing dangerous, you understand, but I... But uh, while the company is essentially very sound, it is desirable to lay hands on a few million dollars without the business world hearing that you are short of such a sum. Is that the case? Well, it's a bit more complicated than and that. I... But simply, Mr. Penn... Is that the case? Okay, in simple terms, yes. Uh, and not at all unusual. It is many years now since I first read in one of your American business magazines of a company in such a difficult position. <laughs> I, I visited the president of the company and made my proposals to him. He accepted. The company was saved. And he became chairman. Mr. Penn. Do you wish to be chairman of your company? Me? Well, of course, uh, eventually. It's only natural. Any executive wants to get to the top. Uh, would you let scruples frustrate that idea? Scruples, Apples Bay? If you had to kill somebody. Now, hold on there. I never killed anybody. Presuming I... you were in the armed forces of some kind. Well, sure, I did my duty for my country. I was in the artillery for a couple of years, but that has nothing to do It has do everything with... to do with the present discussion, Mr. Penn. As an artilleryman, you did not see those you killed. You will not see your chairman die. As a soldier, you believed death was a fair price to pay for I'm survival. not going along with this. I have no idea. Yes, you... you wish, Mr. Penn. Oh, things unthinkable. I can't understand how my pal in the road building company... Ah, got... yes, he... The man with the private jet aircraft and the beautiful estate in Maryland. The success. The chairman. 
the respected leader of India. I can hardly believe he'd go along with that kind of thing that you... Grow up, oh, Mr. Penn. Seize the opportunity. You, like him, and like so many others who have sat in this apartment on that chair, you are hearing of the way. The only way to make a triumph of your life or to turn from that life. I guess I can make my way without that sort of... No, sir, you cannot. One of your junior executives, yes, they are younger. They will not be identified with the destruction of the company. They can start again and make their way back towards the top. But you are the president of the stricken company. I got there with my hands clean. And when it fails, you will be there with your hands empty. So far as any prospective employer is concerned, you as president are to blame for the destruction of the company you lead, Mr. But ben. I'm not the boss. The chairman is. Quite so. Then it is only right and just that the chairman should be the one to pay to keep his company afloat. For my money, he's right off his head. Oh, Dave, how many of the real VIPs of America have got there with clean hands? In politics or in industry. Hey, hey there, Miss Hemingway. That's no way for a loyal CIA girl to speak. Well, anyway, not in front of her boss. Oh, Dave, he frightens me, that Abbas babe. He just seems to have no idea he's doing something wrong or evil. Well, from the what you got out of him, Alice, I'd say his head was turned when the Alexandra tourist industry folded. Before the Arab Israel troubles, those hotels of his must have been like so many gold mines. Yeah, I guess so. I should think he'd got this murderous scheme of his into his mind when somebody was blown out of that penthouse service door accidentally. Right. The fall from there onto that horrible part of the beach must be well over 100 feet. Surely kill anybody. And it wouldn't take long for a legend to grow up that that little cliff was fatal. Al Mawad, the place of death. And to think he invited me up to his penthouse at Kamsin time off. Alice, Alice I, I was thinking of sending you back to the States before you got into any trouble. Oh, I think so, too. Now, Thanks. Hank, slow down, slow down. I said I was thinking about that. Oh, but now you've got another idea. Right. You've got to kill Abbas Bay, Miss Hemingway. That's an order. I would do it myself, but I believe he trusts you. I believe he thinks he's got nothing to fear from a woman. These people hold women in contempt. There's no cause for delay. Tonight will be the ideal night. Ideal because tonight the home team will blow once more. It is a pleasure and honor to welcome you here again, Miss Hemingway. I trust you have reached a positive conclusion regarding our tourist idea. Well, there are outstanding considerations, Abbas Bay, but I'm pretty sure something can be worked out. To our mutual advantage. Oh, that is most gratifying, most encouraging. And so is your wish to look upon the hum scene from my penthouse. There is no better place from which to view its power and majesty, its beauty. You say its beauty, Abbott. You are thinking perhaps so that a thing of terror cannot be beautiful? Well, it, it is a little frightening, you must admit. There is some pleasure in pain, my there is a grandeur in that which is mighty, and even death is but the threshold to life. These are true sayings of the wise ones. Look at the way that sea is thrashing about. You can hardly see it for the sandstorm, ah, but... but... yes, the tempestuous affection of the elements. If the sand is reducing your view of the sea, why not open that door over there and get a clearer view, my dear? The door? The door? Wouldn't it, uh, well, wouldn't it come seem, come storming into this room and make it untidy? Oh, not when it blows at this angle. You see, Miss Hemingway, I have for many years studied my friend, my servant, my master. Well, what do you mean? Oh, the come scene. It is more to me than the annoyance that others find it. Those others who do not understand it do not love it as I do. If you would know the hum scene properly, if you would understand it, then yield to its embrace. Give it your trust, your respect, your affection. Come. No, do not fight against the calling of the mighty passionate one. Oh, let me go. Get away from me. Mr. Drew. Mr. Drew. Mr. Drew, help me. 
help me. You call in vain upon any human assistance. Help! Get away! Let me go! Ride upon the wings of the mighty ah! Ruim chicane is baie vinnig en baie weelderig en ons het baie stil gehou, maar die motorpers het nie. Die tijdskrip K sê van die Ruim chicane. Ons toets van dink die chicane is een plezier om te bestuur en sê die verhouding tussen werkverrichting en makkelijke bestuur is magnifiek. Die motor sê, die Ruim chicane biedt een standaard van motorrij wat ver boos sy prijsklas is. Ruim chicane, door Leiland gebou, luister na wat die kinders daarvan dink. Announcing the complete detergent. New Darto. New Darto. It's all your whole family's wash needs for dazzling whiteness. And brilliant brightness. And stain removal. And easy rinsing. And all temperature action. New Darto. What more could a mother want for her family's wash? Now you've got what you want for your whole family's wash. New Darto is the pop's best friend. New Darto. The complete detergent. It was very foolish of Miss Hemingway to think that I conducted my mission without human assistance. Of course, I needed someone in her barbaric country to make contact with the presidents of companies in difficulties. My assistant was Mr. Dole, who I ordered back to Egypt when the foolish girl thought to cause me trouble. As she had never seen her superior officer in the CIA, which is quite usual in that secret organization, she easily believed Mr. Drew was her boss when he showed her that he knew why she was in Egypt. Her interference was only minor and short-lived, yet, in a way, I envy her. For much as I honor the glorious Khabzin, she came to know its glory far better than I do myself. But you left one thing out of your conspiracy with that supernatural force, the Hamsin. You never told me that you would kill the girl I had come to admire for her courage and beauty. Now that I realize the truth about her, about you, about myself, there's nothing more for me to do but to surrender to the authorities and make sure that you are hanged. And may that wind that came from hell to do your bidding take you when it returns there. When holiday driving gets hot and sticky, watch for the most heartwarming sight on South Africa's highways, a mobile restaurant oasis. Freshen up in a well-equipped restroom and enjoy a delicious snack or meal in a sparkling clean restaurant while mobile attendants top up your tank and clean your windows. Mobile Restaurant Road Stops, now on most major South African routes. My Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Dippenthal.